And this is Bob Capetta from the College of the Florida Keys, and this lesson is on Gaussian elimination with back substitution, a 3x3 three three system, this time with an infinite number of solutions. So we start with the system of three equations and three unknowns. x minus 3y plus 2z is 1. 4x plus y minus 5z is 17. 2x minus 3y plus z equals 5. First column, 1, 4, 2. Second column, negative 3, 1, negative 3. Third column, 2, negative 5, 1. Last column, 1, 17, 5. So we know our process. We need a 1 in the upper left. We have it. If we don't, switch the equations around. If that's not possible, divide everything by that term to make that original number a 1. And then the 2 underneath need to become zeros. So row 2 will be negative 4 times row 1 plus row 2. Negative 4 times row 1, negative 4. Positive 12, negative 8, negative 4. Add that to row 2, 4, 1, negative 5, 17, and we get 0. 13, negative 13, 13. Hmm, 13 is unpleasant, but when we divide that out, those numbers will become very nice. That is our new row 2. I also need to use this one as the pivot to turn that 2 into a 0. Multiply the first row by negative 2 and add it to the third row. So I'll say row 3 is negative 2 times row 1 plus row 3. Negative 2 times row 1, negative 2, positive 6, negative 4, negative 2, added to row 3, 2, negative 3, 1, 5. And we get 0, 3, negative 3, 3. Again, looks unpleasant, but when it divides out, it'll be very nice. That is my new row 3. So this is what we have. 1 on the upper left, 0 underneath, 0 underneath, and then here this has to become a 1. So I need to divide that entire row by 13. So my next move is going to be to say that row 2 is the old row 2 divided by 13. 0 divided by 13 is 0, 13 divided by 13 is 1, negative 13 divided by 13 is negative 1, 13 divided by 13 is 1. And this becomes my new row 2. So my new row 2 is there. Again, our process 1, 0, 0, 1. Now I need to use that one to turn that 3 into a 0. This one is my new pivot. So I'm going to say that row 3 is negative 3 times row 2 plus row 3. Negative 3 times row 2. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Add that to row 3 and notice what happens. 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 3 minus 3 is 0. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So what that equation tells me is, and we have it down here now, is 0x plus 0y plus 0z is 0. That's true. If it were 0, 0, 0, and then a number other than 0, that would be false. For example, if it was 0, 0, 0, 5, you cannot have 0x plus 0y plus 0z is 5. But I can't have 0x plus 0y plus 0z is 0. So we were unsuccessful in getting our usual form of 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. But this is as far as we can go. Now I still have two interesting equations. The first one is 1x minus 3y plus 2z is 1. The second equation is 0x plus 1y minus 1z is 1. So we're going to look at that, and we're going to define a value, an arbitrary value for z, and I'm going to call it the parameter t. So I'm going to say let z equal t, and then I want to solve for y and x in terms of that parameter t. And again, this will have an infinite number of solutions, and we'll try to describe that set. Well, if z is t, y minus z is negative 1, so y minus t is negative 1. Adding t to both sides, we will get y is negative 1 plus t. Then I can also solve for x. We have x minus 3y plus 2z is 1. But y is negative 1 plus t, and z is t. So we'll say x minus 3 times negative 1 plus t, plus 2t equals 1. Negative 3 times 1 is positive 3. Negative 3 times t minus 3t. So we get x plus 3 minus 3t plus 2t is 1. Well, minus 3t plus 2t is minus t. 
So we have x plus 3 minus t is 1. Subtracting 3 from both sides, negative 2. Adding t to both sides, plus t. So we get x is negative 2 plus t. So what I have is, is I have solved for x in terms of t, negative 2 plus t. I've solved for y in terms of t, negative 1 plus t. And I've solved for z in terms of t. So my answer is a set of all values of the form negative 2 plus t, negative 1 plus t, and t. Now, these are three planes that intersect in a line. Think of a binding of a book. So, you know, if you have three pages all stapled together, they intersect at that line of intersection. We want to describe that a little bit better, so I want to determine what are some values, what are some points on that line. So I'm going to choose values for t, and then determine values for x, y, and z. So for example, if t is 0, x is negative 2 plus 0 or negative 2, y is negative 1 plus 0 or negative 1, z is t, z is 0. So the point negative 2, negative 1, 0 is true for all three of these equations. But I could choose other values of t. So I chose t equals 1, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0, and t is 1. So another point on the line of intersection for these three planes is the point negative 1, 0, 1. And I guess I'll do one more. I might as well let t equal 2. So if t is 2, we get negative 2 plus 2 is 0 on x. We get negative 1 plus 2 is 1 on y, and we get t is 2. So there are an infinite number of points that satisfy all three of these equations, an infinite number of points. I have listed three of them. I have also listed the general form for the solution, namely x is negative 2 plus t, y is negative 1 plus t, z is t. But what enabled us to do this? What enabled us to recognize we had an infinite number of solutions? With our 3 by 3 system, it is the fact that we have a line all of zeros. 0, 0, 0, 0. If that happens, an entire row of zeros, that will be indicative of a situation where we're going to have infinite number of solutions. And that will conclude this lesson.